Hello, Stephron James here. It's great to be back with you again for the Minister's Lunch um, hosted by Pastor Monica Malinge. Uh, we appreciate Pastor Malinge and her always wanting and willing to help pastors and pastor's wives grow and develop in the things of God. I've been doing a series and we're working on part two of a series of intent making. And we want to go back and talk a little bit about it, but this series is building one upon another. So if you want to get the fullness of this, because we'll be launching into other things today, go back and find part one of this series on tent making. Again, I'm Stephron James. I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I pastor, I'm a businessman, and I enjoy what God has given me to do, but teaching his word and breaking down the things that God has given to the tent maker to make the body of Christ more effective in the earth is a part of what my calling is. I am to enlighten and to bring God's truth to people where it comes to marketplace and tent making effectiveness in the earth. Now, what we did is we started with a scripture last week and then I introduced uh, the Old Testament part of that because of what was said. Just to, as a matter of recap, I want to jump back in right where we left off last week, but I want to read the scripture out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. So please, again, I encourage you, go back and listen to part one so you can get the fullness of what God is saying to us. So uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says this, and God is able Listen to that. God is able. That means he has the ability to. It doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but he does have the ability to. God is able to make all grace abound towards you and me so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, we may abound. That means overflow, go beyond in every good work. If we are not abounding in every good work, I want to submit to you, the problem is not God. We have to understand what he's looking for in order to make that work. And uh, we said that verse nine is the contingency point. In other words, God will do everything that's in verse eight if we do everything that's in verse nine. If we will do our part, then God will do his part. So let's read verse nine. But I told you last week, verse nine is very critical and let's look at why. The Apostle Paul through the writer says, as it is written. As it is written means that there's somewhere that this is connecting to that has been put down in scripture. And we said the last time that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man and woman of God will be perfect, ready for every good work. Now. This scripture tells us that we are to bound in every good work. So that means that the word of God gives us every indication of what the good works are that we should be doing. And so we even said last time, if we're ever going to step into the good works that contain our sufficiency, that contain all good things, that contain all the grace God has, that contain everything that we need, that contain all of the resources, all of the wisdom, all of the insight, all the connections, all the resources, because grace covers all of that. If we're going to step into that, we have to understand the contingency point. The contingency point is written, and Paul says, Everything is contingent upon this. So let's see what is written. In verse 9, as it is written, he or she has distributed freely. I don't have to go, have time to go back and explain or define the word distribute. Please look at part one to get that. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And I told you that word righteousness there, righteousness there can be interchanged with the word justice. Just as simply, you could say his justice endures forever or his righteousness endures forever. Now last week, because this is the key lynch or connecting 
part to this whole section of scripture, we went to where that scripture is located. But before we do that this week, I want to go down and read just a little bit more here in 2 Corinthians. And then we'll jump to where that scripture came from because it is relevant to us because when Paul quoted it, he didn't just quote it for that piece of it. He quoted it for everything that was related to it. Remember, they read the scriptures every day. So when he said it is written, they could go back and link it to what he was talking about. He didn't give book, chapter, and verse or where it was written. He didn't give the address, so to speak, of where it was written, but they would have been able to connect it to where that had been spoken. And I will tell you, so you can get ready to go there. Psalms 112, verse 9 is where we will go when we finish a couple of more scriptures. Let's look at verse 10. He who supplies seed to the sower, he who supplies seed to the sower, the, slower, the sower is one who plants in the ground. The, he that supplies to the one who plants in the ground and the one that gives bread for food. So we got two things here. We got the seed that is for planting and then we got the seed that is for eating. And we have to begin to discern which one is in our hand. Because he that supplies it is God. But he gives you seed to sow and bread for food. If you eat your seed as your bread, then you eliminate your harvest. I want to submit to you that he that's distributed freely didn't give this food away. He gave the seed that God had gave him and he knew what to plant and what to eat. There's a spiritual discernment. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, strong meat belongs to those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. I want to submit to you, I believe much of our good and evil is that we're eating our seed when we should be using it to create a harvest. And because God's grace has supplied the seed needed to create the harvest, if we don't operate and use it the way we should, then we will miss the harvest that's supposed to come to us. So he supplies seed to the sower and bread for food and will supply and multiply your seed and multiply your seed and multiply your seed. He will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Remember, I said that word righteousness could be used for justice. I told you in this particular teaching, we won't get to break that down. But you need to keep that in mind, that righteousness and justice in this particular scripture can be used interchangeably. And look at what it says. He will not only give you seed for sowing, but he'll increase your harvest. And that harvest will be in righteousness. What is righteousness? Right standing, right alignment right place for right flow. Can I tell you something? Heaven is always pouring out to earth. There is no lack of supply from heaven to earth. The question is, are we positioned to receive the supply when it comes? If I was pouring out a bottle of water right now, it would go straight to the floor unless I took a cup and put under the spout of that water and then it would go in my cup. All we have to do is align ourselves with where God is pouring out and blessings can overflow for us. So what God is saying is when you get your seed and your feed, what you're to eat in alignment and you can align and I know what's my seed and I know what I'm to eat, then we can see a harvest of righteousness. And why? Look at the uh, next verse in verse 11. And you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. If you find yourself coming short right now of the ability to be generous in every way, I wanna to submit to you, maybe you haven't been in proper alignment. Maybe you haven't understood what your seed was because your seed will produce an abundant, an abundant harvest. And he, God said, not only will he give you what you planted, 
but he will increase your harvest also. Now, God is able to do that and it will produce thanksgiving in the church because finally we have sufficient to meet the needs that come our way. My dear brothers and sisters, it's easy to sit up and say, as soon as God blesses, I will be able to do this. I want to submit to you, perhaps if you were sowing the seed that you've been eating, you might have more to sow than what you know. Uh, that kind of rhyme, didn't it? Praise the Lord. We thank God for that. Listen, my, I, I have no condemnation. There is no condemnation here. But I believe the body of Christ is God's instrument on the earth to bring his kingdom from heaven to the earth. There should be a identical performance of heaven and earth. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. There, here, the same is the intent of God. He's going to do that through his people, especially through his tent makers. I do not take anything from the body of Christ, from the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. But I submit to you, we can begin to apostle in media. We can begin to apostle in the school system, in entertainment, in government, in the military, in the marketplace. We need apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and them just as much as we do in the church. Because there we can make as big a difference as we can anywhere. God never wanted it to be limited just to the church. He just wanted to work through the church to accomplish his, his objectives on the earth. It's God's kingdom that he is bringing. It's when the kingdom is preached throughout the whole world that the end will come. God is looking for us, dear brothers and sisters, to put ourselves in alignment with the scriptures so that the seed that we have will be able to produce and generate many things for the kingdom of God. Now, we want to pick back up and go back to our scripture from the Old Testament that we have that we need to work from and work through. Go back to verse number nine. As it is written, that's connected to something. And what is connected to is Psalms 112, verse number, and we're going to go back and read this specific part there so you can see where we're relating it to. But then I'm going to go back to verse 1, and we're going to go through that scripture because everything Paul said here related to this above it and beneath it is, I believe, directly connected to Psalms 112. And I believe that there are some promises in Psalms 112 that are applicable to us if we will build the scriptures line upon line, precept upon precept. Here's some, there's some. If we can pick it all up, we can walk in it. So go to Psalms 112, and we're going to start with verse 9. Psalms 112, let me get there, and verse 9. And you see the exact words. He has distributed freely... He has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. And I told you there's one extra line added in Psalms 112 that we need to pay attention to. His horn is exalted in honor. Wherever you see the word horn in the Old Testament, it means authority, ability to act, ability to speak and act as the one that is giving you that place. So here's what it's saying. His horn is exalted. That means you are speaking like God and doing like God. So God not only gives you the authority, which is the commission and the right to do it, he also gives you the ability to do it. Remember we saw in the first part of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, God is able, ability. God is able to give his ability, his power and his authority to do what he has called us to do. So that's when your authority is exalted in honor. It's not you promoting yourself. It's not you lifting yourself up. It's giving God the rightful place that he should. I won't read verse 10. Go back and look at what we covered last week and you will get that part of it. What I want to do now is go back to verse 1 because this is all done in context of he has distributed freely he has given to the poor. 
His righteousness endures forever. And his horn, his authority is exalted in honor. My God, just saying that causes everything in me to rise up because I recognize who my God has called me to be and what he's given me the capability and ability to do on the earth. Now go back to verse one with me and we're gonna put this whole thing in context because when Paul mentioned it is written in the New Testament and he knew that they knew the scripture that he was referencing, he knew that they would get the context. Sometimes because we won't study or we don't pay attention to words like it is written, we don't get the full context, even though it was meant to give it to us. So let's put this whole thing in context. I will work through this as much as I can in this section. If we have to carry it over to the next section, we will. But understand that this is all put together for us to learn from, glean from, and be able to operate in. So it says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now we have to understand, wherever it starts a scripture saying praise the Lord, there is, they are doing something that they are ready to celebrate about. They are not writing this with, okay, I'm gonna write this line, then I'm gonna come up with the next line, then I'm gonna come up with the next line, I'm gonna come up with the next line. There is a truth that they have received. That truth causes them to start the whole description of what they're about to say. Remember, there were no lines and there were no separations in this when it was originally written. It was just a text. And this is something that this writer had realized or come to understand. And the first thing he says, praise the Lord. He's excited about what he's about to tell you about. He's excited because something spectacular is about to come after this. And let's walk through it together. So praise the Lord. Get ready. I'm about to tell you something we can celebrate. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. And we're going to find out what those commands are here in a minute. But there's a person or a man or a woman or a boy or a girl who fears the Lord and greatly delights in his command. And they're going to give you what are some of the characteristics that follow this type of person. Now, the reason I'm saying that is, if you're telling me that you fear the Lord and you delight greatly in his commands, every one of these things I'm about to say, I'm about to say, should apply to you. If they don't apply to you or you don't see them in your life, then there is something that is out of order. Ha. And I want to submit to you verse 9 in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 and 9 and Psalms chapter 112 verse 9 might be your issue. So we'll take a look. Let's walk through it together. Blessed is a man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. Do you delight in his commands? I hope you're saying yes. I'm looking at, at the camera and I'm nodding with you. Yes, yes, you delight greatly in his command. Listen what it says, promise for you. His or her offspring will be mighty in the land. Oh my God. Now you understand why the person said praise the Lord. Because when you uh, fear the Lord and delight greatly in, in his commands, your offspring shall be mighty in the land. That means that they will be conquerors and they'll be the ones that are doing great things, mighty things on behalf of God. When your offspring are mighty in the land, it positions you to be able to accomplish great and mighty things because you know your posterity, your heritage coming behind you will be able to accomplish mighty things. There, his offspring are mighty in the land. Now, let me ask you this. What land are you in? Are you here in Kenya? Are you in Kissy land? Are you uh, in Collingen land? Are you in Kukuyu land? Or uh, are you in Taita land? Whatever land you are in, your offspring are supposed to be great in that land. That means that they are not to be the behind. They are not to be below. They are not to be uh, conquered. They are not to be underneath. They are to be great in the land. 
great in the land. Their offspring will be mighty and great in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Blessed means having all sufficiency in all things. That means that you are lacking nothing. Blessed means you have abundant supply for every need and every situation that could come your way. Blessed means that God has put his favor upon you and nothing is lacking, nothing is short, nothing is missing. If you don't measure up, if your circumstances don't align with what you just read, I want to submit to you, it is God's desire that it does. It is God's heart that you would have offspring that are mighty in the land, that you have children that are raising up a generation that's upright and they are blessed beyond measure. Because God is looking for a people that he can show himself strong through. He's looking for a people that he can do great things through, but he doesn't want it to stop with you. And that's why the man starts this whole section of scripture with praise the Lord. Because when we fear God and we delight in his commands, we set the stage for our children and our children's children to be blessed and be mighty in the land. My dear people, God is saying, when we do verse nine, every, cause that's what Paul quoted. He made that the contingency point for everything that came in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 11. I believe now he's going back and the people that heard that can go back and reflect on what God is saying to them about how they, if they fear the Lord and delight greatly in his commandments, that their children, that their very children will be mighty in the land and the generation of the upright will be blessed. I want to cover one more scripture. We're just going to introduce the scripture. It's going to give you something to ponder until we come back and we'll pick it back up next time. But let's go to verse three, because I think this will explain why you see verse one. Praise the Lord. Look at verse three. Wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. I want to say that again. Wealth and riches are in his house, in her house, and their righteousness endures forever. Brothers and sisters, my dear people, I decree upon you, wealth and riches are to be in your house. Your children should be blessed and mighty in the land. If your life if your circumstance, if your situation is not meeting that, I believe with all my heart, if you can get a hold of the promises of God concerning this, then everything these scriptures are saying can become your portion. In 2 Corinthians, it said, God is able to make all grace abound that you have in sufficiency in all things might abound to every good work. And as it is written, you have distributed freely, you have given to the poor. And then it says that God is doing this so that you can be enriched in every way. I know enriched can be spiritually enriched, but it also includes physical wealth. It also includes mental wealth. It also includes social wealth and soulish wealth where your emotions are not void or robbed of potential. Everything God is doing is so you can have riches and wealth in your house. I decree upon you, riches and wealth are coming your way as you get enlightened to the truth of God's word. My dear brothers and sisters, we'll pick this back up in part three because I know God is speaking to your heart that there is more for you than what you have seen. God bless you. We'll be talking soon.